ITR Boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. My dad, my father is a former heavyweight professional boxer in South Africa. Since I was six years old, my dad in the beginning forced me to do boxing. I was a scared little boy, didn't want to do it. But my dad, thanks to my dad, that's how I got into boxing. 18, 19 years old. I got an amateur record of 97. 97 fights, 94 wins. Um, I knew I had something, but I never knew that I could become a world champion at that age. And when I was about 18, 19 years old, in the gym with professionals, way back with Nick Durant in South Africa, Johannesburg, I was in the gym with the likes of Philip and uh, Cassius Beloy, all these world world champions, world known fighters. And um, that's when I discovered that I've, I've got something. You know what? It's it's one of the toughest things I've done in my life is moving out to America. Um, giving up everything I had um, at the age of 26, living the life in South Africa, world champion, had no worries, um, celebrity known by people, and then moving out to America, a country that I've never been, rules I've never lived by, it's a whole new world, no friends, no family, no one but me. Um, the toughest things I've done, but I would do it in a heartbeat again because I've discovered who I am, I've, I've learned to live with myself, and I've learned and, and found out how strong I really am since I moved out here. My dreams, my dreams, my vision, it's bigger. You know, world champion in South Africa, but that was it. You know, I was always just gonna be that world champion in South Africa, what uh, the majority of people in South Africa is gonna follow and love and know. But I wanted to do something bigger, and that was, when I was a kid, I had role models. You'll, you'll remember Corey Sanders that knocked out Klitschko, the white Buffalo Butter, Francois Butter, fought Mike Tyson. Um, Dingan Tubela, Brian Mitchell. I had role models that represented my country in America. And by the time I was professional, there was no one. So by the time I became world champion, I looked at it and there was no one. And I told my dad that I want to go to America because my dreams and my visions are bigger. I want to be that inspiration for the kids that love the sport of boxing in South Africa because the sport is dying in South Africa because kids don't have role models. Kids have no one to look up to that says he's a South African, but he's doing it. So that's why I made the move out to America because I want to be that guy that the kids look up to and say, but, but he's in the gym with Freddie Roach. He's sparring with Miguel Cotto. He's alongside uh, Oscar De La Hoya. He is, he's, he's with Vanna Holyfield. And that's why I came to America because I want to be, I want to inspire the kids of South Africa. First six, first six months was, was tough. I was in a gym called The Rock out in Carson with a whole lot of Mexican tough fighters. Um, I didn't really have anyone to, to associate with in the sense of talking language. You know, it's, I'm South African. It was something to get used to, the, the, the way they lived, the way they trained. It was something I needed to, to adapt to. So it was tough the first six, seven months. Um, but, you know, struggle builds character. And, and through that, I started building character. Through that, I started making a name for myself, started getting known. That's when Freddie Rhodes brought me in and I started sparring with Miguel Cotto when he was fighting Sergio Martinez. I was his main sparring partner for seven weeks. And people started finding out about this South African kid. And then Freddie Rhodes took me to Madison Square Garden and, and I beat Cecil McCullough, who at that time was 20 and 0 for the IBF international title. And people started to take a little bit note of me. And, and that's, that's how it all started for me. Absolutely, you know, but that was the loss was something I've never, because I've never lost. You know, even though I lost in Serbia, I beat the champion in Serbia, but it was a hometown decision, so I never felt like I lost. Losing to Spain was the first time I've really experienced how it felt to really be on the losing side. And, and, and it was tough because I didn't, I didn't have the experience on how to handle it. Um, the night I fought Errol Spence, I should have never fought him because of what I went through mentally. Mentally, I lost that fight weeks building up. You know, I, I, I had a bad training camp. I make no excuses. I was super fit, but mentally, I was never there. Um, my trainer, Freddie Roach, never showed up in Canada. I trained with Freddie for two months. He never showed up the night of my fight. Mentally, for a fighter, that's it, man. That's big. Um, at that point, me and my management team, who at that point was my management team, we were in a court case. Things wasn't, wasn't going well. So mentally, I was never in that fight. So absolutely, I had to throw them out of my changing room. I had to lock them out of my changing room. A half an hour before the biggest fight of my career, I had to throw my management team out of my changing room. I know the guy I am and what I can bring to the table. 
the same guy that beat Matt Tuatin, the same guy that beat Kaiser Mabuza for the world title, that beat up, beat up Kendall Holt, the same guy that beat the gold medalist Bongani Molasi in the Commonwealth Games, the same guy would have given Errol Spence a, a hell of a fight. And that's why, you know, that I use that as motivation because because I want that rematch down the line. I want that rematch because I know I can do better. Even though if you saw that fight, I took a beating. I wasn't going to quit. I took a beating. The ref stopped the fight. On the I was on my feet. A good call from the referee. I wasn't happy at the point because it's a TKO loss. But uh, he still couldn't knock me out of my jaw. But best experience. Pound for pound, like you said, probably going to be the best pound for pound fight in the world. Most feared welterweight right now, in my opinion, and and I fought him, I faced him, so so that's a plus point. Is is I know what it feels like to face someone as strong and as good as Errol Spence. You know what what happened was you know a lot of people missed the opportunity of success in life because people are afraid to take risks. And and I was on a one month holiday in South Africa, came back and Conor McGregor approached me. I didn't approach Conor. Conor, Conor came to my gym, approached me, and asked me to help him was sparring because he was getting ready to fight Nate Diaz. At that point, the whole Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather talk surfaced. So I knew what I was doing. I knew that if I say yes to this day, that people is going to want to know who's this boxer Conor McGregor is working with. So I agreed to work with Conor. They didn't pay me. I didn't take one cent from Conor. I worked with him. Um, we had two sparring sessions, in fact. One was behind closed doors. Um, no footage of that, which was, you know, my white shirt had blood on from Conor bleeding because I had to establish who's the alpha male. It was, it, was, it was a good sparring session, it was a respectful sparring session. He respects me, I respect him. The second sparring session came the following week where they showed up with a bunch of camera people. Long story short, they filmed it. Wasn't, I, I didn't approve of it. I made sure, I told them, I don't want any of this footage to be leaked out to, to TMZ, anybody, because I'm helping him, I'm not in fighting shape, it's just moving around. In, in that case, the, the gym owners at that point leaked footage to TMZ. Connor then went on and edited footage, made it look like he beat me up. I sat with unedited footage, which I later, three weeks later, released because I had to, to save my career and just save my name. And um, it just blew up, you know, what goes around comes around. And what goes around comes around. In the beginning, it was bad, and it turned around, turned around and worked in my favor. I mean, my name blew up just like I knew it would, and people, People saw the truth. One of the best to come out of South Africa. Um, definitely been, been, been fighting for another world title. Tough kid. Um, did his best horse, hard working kid. And um, walk, walk with his heart on his sleeve. A motivator. Someone that, that lives to inspire other people. And um, yeah, most, most of all, one of the best to come out of South Africa.